Backgrounds can be hard and a lot of people choose to fill them in with one color or leave them as blank paper, but I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily create an out of focus or bokeh background that will make your drawings look more interesting and stand out from the crowd. The reference photo I chose for this piece actually already had an out of focus background, but there is an easy way to do that with a photo editor like Photoshop or a free one like Pixlr online, which I will show you how to do in just a moment. I will also leave a link to Pixlr in the description as well if you do want to follow along and give this a try. If you don't like the background on your original reference photo, you can combine photos and use different backgrounds. So I'm going to show you two examples, one of a landscape with a mountain and then one with more plants in the back, like kind of like a jungle. Keep in mind that you can choose a photo where you might only slightly blur the image so that you can still see the subtle outlines of tree trunks or the sky or mountains. Or you can choose a photo where you know you're going to be blurring out the image a bit more so that it would just be a lot of colors and you won't really see the outline of any of the objects in the background. Either option is totally fine, it's just personal preference. So this is what Pixlr looks like, so that's a free online editor. And all you need to do is import your image and then go to Filter, Details, Blur. And then you can choose how much you want to blur the image, so you can decide if you want to blur it a little bit, so you can still see what the objects are in the background, or you can blur it a lot so that you can just give the general idea of the background. The best part is that you don't have to copy the photo exactly. You can just use the general placement of the colors and the shapes as a guide. No one will know the difference, so your photo editing doesn't have to be perfect. And most of the time, I don't bother trying to edit my main subject over the top of this new blurry background. You can just open up your main reference photo and then just put it next to your new background image. And then you get a general idea if you're going to like how they look together. So I'm using pan pastels for this, but you can use pastel pencils or pastel sticks if that's what you have. It's just quicker and more cost effective to use pan pastels. And it's also a lot easier to make the colors look smoother. So the paper that I'm working on is Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat, and this is the only paper that I recommend for pastel drawings. It has a little bit of a tooth, but it's not really grainy, so it allows a lot of layers, but also for a smooth end result as well. And the tools that I'm using to apply my pan pastels are called soft tools, that's S-O-F-F-T. Um, they come with the most of the sets of, well, most of the larger sets of the pan pastels, and you can get them with these little blue handles with the soft cover on the end, or you can get kind of bigger sponges as well. So start by applying the pastels in circular motions with a soft tool. And I chose one that has a little bit more of a rounded tip, because if you use a square tip, you're more likely to get harsher edges. When I go from a light color to a dark color or vice versa, I'm either wiping my tool clean on a paper towel or a microfiber cloth, or I'm grabbing a different tool so that the colors aren't too contaminated. When you first apply the pastel from the pan, you'll notice that a lot of pastel comes off the tool onto the paper in the first few strokes, and then it stops coming off onto the paper. And that's the point where you want to go back into your pan and pick up some more pastel. Don't try and push harder to make the pastel come off of the tool because that's just going to damage your tool really quickly. I'm not worrying too much about getting a perfect color match. I'm just dipping my sponge into a couple of different colors that I think are similar to what I'm seeing in the reference photo and then applying it to my drawing. The colors will basically mix together on my paper as I'm going along. If I think that a color isn't quite right, I'll just go back and pick up more of another color and apply it to the drawing to correct it. And keep in mind that you'll want to add brighter, more saturated colors in the first layer, because once you've added a couple of layers of pastel, those colors will get dulled down. So make sure that you start out with more vibrant colors than what you want your end result to be, because they won't be as vibrant in the end. And just remember that the color choices don't have to be perfect. Make sure that you're varying the size of the circles or the shapes that you're creating to make it look more natural. They don't have to be exactly the same as the reference photo either. The first layer will look blotchy and not really smooth and you'll see a lot of the paper showing through and that's completely normal. So don't panic, just trust the process and keep going. Blurry backgrounds like this are great for adding depth to your drawing because you will have a lot more detail in your main subject in comparison. 
This will bring attention to the main subject, which is the focal point, and it really brings the subject forward in front of the blurry background, creating a more 3D kind of effect where it pops off the page. Once you've added some more pastel, you will start to see it look a lot smoother and become easier to blend the edges of the shapes into each other so that it's not as harsh looking. Towards the end, you'll be able to come in with a soft tool that is mostly clean and soften out any of the edges that look a little too harsh and also touch up any color that you want to be brighter or darker. You can also alter the colors slightly if you want to add some more yellows or greens or any other colors in there as well. And I like to come through with a clean finger to really soften out those edges towards the end too. This is such an easy way to create backgrounds that look more interesting and will make your artwork stand out from the crowd as well. Pan pastels are great for soft backgrounds, but they're also really helpful for the base layer or the underpainting of your drawing. In this video, I'll show you exactly how you can create the first layer on this pastel piece using pan pastels.